The history of the current version of Malmesbury Cinema began in December 2010, when the first film at Movies at Malmesbury was presented in the Town Hall. The film was called Red and was an all-action movie starring Helen Mirren, Bruce Willis and John Malkovitz. The projector was sighted on the stage and projected onto a screen that was pulled down on the back wall of the hall, covering, as it did, the list of mayors of Malmesbury. Movies at Malmesbury was part of a consortium and shared the projector and the sound equipment with a number of other towns in the county. The projector and sound equipment arrived in a white van on the first and third Mondays of the month. The equipment was unloaded and carried upstairs, set up on stage and then dismantled and carried downstairs at the end of the event. Even though attendance figures for Malmesbury were considerably higher than elsewhere, the scheme came to an end when the equipment began to fail. It was not designed to be moved around. When a decision was made to site the equipment permanently elsewhere, it looked as if the Movies at Malmesbury initiative had come to an end. And so it would were it not for the enthusiastic support that local firms and individuals gave to the project. Finance was acquired to help purchase a projector and Dolby, based locally, very kindly supplied us with speakers and sound equipment. After a short break, Movies at Malmesbury reopened, this time with a back projection system, projecting an image onto the back of a special screen on stage at the front of the hall. The number of events at the cinema has grown from two film screenings per month to over 12. Indeed, in 2016, 123 events were hosted by Movies at Malmesbury, attracting an audience of well over 3,000 people. Content has expanded from simply films and now includes live opera and ballet from the Royal Opera House, drama from the Royal Shakespeare Company in the National Theatre, exhibitions of artwork and music, a recent introduction of pop and rock concerts featuring the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. But what does it take to put on a film or a live event at Movies at Malmesbury? The process begins four months at least before the event when a small group of volunteers begin to scour the internet, magazines, newspapers and radio shows for forthcoming releases. Since Movies at Malmesbury is the smallest category of cinema available, we're unable to show any film less than 42 days or six weeks out of central release. And in order to get the best available films as early as possible, we need to get our requests to the distributors often before the film has even been released. Once a film has been identified as a potential, it's added to a shared spreadsheet. As the film list begins to grow, films are organised according to their release date and, 42 days onward, the earliest date we could show them in Malmesbury. Sometimes the list can grow to over 60 films for consideration. The group responsible for choosing films meets every two months, and for that meeting, synopses of the available films are compiled into a single document and handed out beforehand. The group then tries to fit films into the available booking slots for the town hall. Once all of the slots have been provisionally filled with film titles, the schedule is handed to Claire in the office. She has links to all of the major film distributors and starts firing off requests for films via email. Film distributors will often come back and tell us that it's simply too early to confirm the bookings for the date that we wish. But Claire's doggedness and determination mean that more often than not we're given permission to screen a film on the day that we want. As soon as confirmations and contracts for the film start to come in, another spreadsheet is used to record dates and times. This spreadsheet passes data to three more spreadsheets. The first one is a rotor used by the small team of volunteer projectionists. As soon as a film is confirmed, its date and time appear on the projectionist rotor. As they begin to put in their requests, the rotor fills. The second spreadsheet is one used by the front of house volunteers. Once again, as soon as a film is confirmed, volunteers can begin to sign up to help us manage the event. The final spreadsheet is used to make sure that all of the publicity for the event is up to date and distributed at the right time. With the film booked and times agreed, the next stage is the creation of posters and advertisements. For each film, a poster is produced featuring the distributor's poster, the title of the film and the dates of screening, the length of the film 
and the film's British Board of Film Classification rating, together with a synopsis of the plot. This information is then used to populate both our Facebook page and also the Town Hall website page featuring the cinema. The film appears as an event on Facebook and for each event a copy of the poster, dates and times of screenings, the rating, the length of the film, the synopsis of the film, a link to the trailer and a link to our online ticket booking service is provided. The information on the poster is then used to create a pre-show screen that will advertise the event before all screenings and shows. As soon as a month has been filled with confirmed bookings, a series of graphic-based posters are produced for the Facebook page, local magazines and newspapers, shop windows around town, and for distribution by the Movies at Malmesbury volunteers. Everything now goes quiet until a week or so before the initial screening date. It is in this week, leading up to the showing of a film, that the licence for the film and the film itself are received in the Town Hall. The licence comes in the form of as an attachment to an email, specifying the date and time that the film can be shown. This has to be copied onto a memory stick before being loaded onto the projection server up on stage. Without the correct licence, the film, which arrives via courier in the form of a computer hard drive, will not project. Once the courier delivers the hard drive containing the film image, the film has to be ingested into the server. This is a two-part process. The first part copies the film, whilst the second pass checks to make sure that there are no loading errors. A two-hour film takes approximately one and a half hours to load onto the server. As soon as the film has been ingested, the hard drive is returned to the office downstairs and collected and returned to the distributors by the courier service. The next stage is to build a show programme for the film. The Dolby projection system software that we use enables us to build programmes based upon modules that are slotted together. These modules, which can contain pre-show event screens, trailers, instructions for the projector and sound equipment, can also include the feature films themselves. Once a film show has been built, it can be saved on the computer server in readiness for the screening date. Such a show will normally feature instructions for the projector on the size of the screen required by the film, instructions for the sound system about volume levels, all of the pre-show screens advertising future events, the film itself, and then a series of instructions at the end of the film to turn off the sound and close down the projector bulb. And so to the day of the screening. The projectionists on duty will normally arrive at the town hall between 40 minutes and an hour before the start of the film. Their first duty is to lower the back projection screen and then open up the doors at the back of the stage where the projector is located. Once the computer system in the cupboard, which features the system computer, the show store where the films are stored, the Dolby surround sound system which features three sound controllers, once that's all turned on, they switch on the projector and fire up the fan, system and the bulb. The next task is carried out at a computer on stage. The projectionist logs onto the computer control system and then calls up the relevant pre-show for this event. We have two distinct pre-shows, one for general use which includes trailers for as many films as possible and a separate one minus potentially unsuitable trailers to be shown before any children's film. The curtains close and the projectionist now waits for the time when the pre-show needs to be started. The other volunteers, who manage the front of house arrangements, arrive 45 minutes before the event and make sure that the boxes for the ticket money and bar takings are organised, the chairs are set out in the hall according to the plan agreed with the fire officer, and generally ensure that everything is ready for the arrival of the audience. The projectionist uses a relatively simple programme to begin the pre-show and then opens the curtains. Once the pre-show is finished, the curtains are closed and the projectionist loads up the film programme. There's usually a delay of between one or two minutes between the pre-show ending and the main film show beginning. During this time, the licence for the film is checked and then the projector bulb lights. The curtain opens when the programme begins and the hall lights are dimmed and then switched off. 
The projectionist has an interesting view of the film from on stage, everything being in reverse. Once he or she is happy that the film is running as it should and that volume levels are neither too high nor too low, they can then sit back and enjoy the film. At the end of the film the curtains are closed and the film programme closes down the projector. While front of house volunteers make sure that takings are recorded and checked and the chairs, if necessary, are stacked at the back of the hall, the projectionist goes through a set process to switch the system off. The sound channels are turned off one by one and then the main computer stack is switched off. The fan on the top of the projector is left running for as long as 15 minutes until the bulb has cooled down sufficiently. The bulbs for our projector cost in excess of £700 and run at extremely high temperatures throughout the screening. It's vitally important that the bulb is allowed to cool down in a carefully managed manner. But films aren't the only events that we host at Movies at Malmesbury. In recent times we've added live events from the Royal Opera House, the National Theatre, the Royal Shakespeare Company and Glyndebourne. For these there is no film. The pictures and sound come to us via a satellite link on the roof of the Town Hall. For these events we have to tune the satellite receiver to a specified transponder on a remote satellite. Usually on the day before a live event we are given a one hour opportunity to tune our system into the live feed. Once the feed has been identified it is saved on the server in readiness for the live event. On the evening of such an event we are provided with a detailed timetable by the host. In addition to switching on all the elements of the computer stack we also switch on a scalar unit and the satellite system hardware. The scalar unit ensures the satellite feed for both picture and sound fits with our requirements. As with films, the pre-show advertising forthcoming events is run and then a special programme which transfers the control of data from the computer to the satellite dish is then run so that, hopefully, there's a seamless transfer from movies at Malmesbury to the Royal Opera House or some other remote host. At the end of a live event, the projectionist runs a special modular program on the system to shut down the projector properly. In the event of there being a break in communication between the computer software and the projector, there's a small touchscreen available above the keyboard on the stage, which the projectionist can use to override commands on the projector. And as soon as one event is over, so the whole system begins again for the next.